Thank you very much to Ms. Campus for uh, the excellent work. Indeed, we've had very good discussions uh, on this file from the beginning of both the procedure here and in the European Parliament. Uh, I look forward to the adoption of the opinion here, and I count on the fact that you will stay with me until the end of the procedure in the European Parliament uh, as well. Uh, and, and that is maybe also an important point. Uh, we've had the opinion of the European Economic and Social Committee. We have the opinion of the uh, Committee of the Regions after today. Uh, I hope to be able to finish the work in the European Parliament uh, before uh, the end of the month. Um, and then we need to move on. And this would also be very important that uh, the member states, and of course you all can go back to your own member states and tell your uh, colleagues this, uh, should uh, pick up their pace and start finishing this job as well. Now, uh, there is a lot of things we agree on. Uh, and this makes my uh, statement here a little bit easier, I would say, because on the main principles we agree, and this is first and foremost, uh, that we need a European Labour Authority in order to consolidate fairness and support confidence in the single market. Now, I am from the most beautiful province in the Netherlands, Limburg. Uh, I would also say this if the governor of Limburg was not here today, but uh, he is here, so that's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, a good coincidence, but it's an interesting province because, of course, we have more borders with Belgium uh, and Germany than with the rest of the Netherlands. Uh, so nobody has to convince me that it is good to have labour mobility, to have cross-border uh, cross uh, labour mobility, uh, free movement of persons. But at the same time, I'm also convinced that free movement can never only be free, it must also be fair. And in order to have fair mobility in the European Union, we need two things. We need, first of all, clear and strict rules with regards to labour mobility. And I think if you look back to this mandate with the Juncker Commission, with Marianne Thyssen as our Commissioner for Social Affairs, we have done a lot. Of course, we already have the Enforcement Directive. Uh, we now have a new Posting of Workers Directive. We are working on the coordination of social security, and we are still working on the... Uh, mobility package in transport. So we need those strict and fair rules. But at the same time, rules are not worth the paper they're printed on unless we have a proper application of those rules. Um, and this is something, of course, when we see that more and more Europeans have become mobile, more and more Europeans, already 17 million, are working in a different country than that of their nationality, then we also have to make sure that inspections, application and enforcement of those European rules are also have a cross-border uh, dimension. Strengthen that cross-border dimension. I think the European Labour Authority will play a very important role in that. And this is the second point that I very much agree with uh, Ms. Campos as well, that ELA should have an operational role it should have an operational role with clearly defined tasks and competences. And uh, this is an idea that is supported in your opinion and I hope gets also the support of the majority of this committee. Because only then, when ELA has a focus and a limited set of tasks, it would be able to make a difference in practice. And to make a difference in practice, and this is the uh, third point, yes, we need this cooperation with local and regional authorities. I think it was very clear from your opinion, and I fully agree with this, that local and regional authorities are closest to the citizens. They are closest to employers, closest to employees, and therefore the uh, connectedness between the European labor authorities and local and regional authorities is crucial. This is one of the ideas I took on board, for instance, when it comes to information provision. It is absolutely crucial that employers and employees who are thinking about going cross-border receive proper information. But I always uh, question whether ELA as a European agency at the EU level is the best uh, suited to provide that information. I think there especially we have a role for regional and for uh, local authorities and I call on the European Commission to facilitate that role. A couple of other short points. Close involvement of the social partners, as you have discussed. I fully agree to that, and we are looking ways to increase the participation of the social partners, at least in the stakeholders group, but uh, perhaps also even in the management board. 
Um, and then I come to, well, maybe the, uh, the last, but also the most complicated point, uh, which is also a part of our discussions in the European Parliament. Uh, there is a beautiful sentence in your opinion um, that basically says that ELA's actions should be based on a binding approach, but the autonomy of national system must be upheld to the same extent. And this is, of course, when we talk about subsidiarity, the crucial question when it comes to ELA. I am convinced that ELA can only work when the member states uh, who, are, um, uh, who are the topic of a uh, situation cooperate. Uh, at the same time, we can never force member states to cooperate uh, against their own wishes. So what we are looking to uh, uh, work on in the European Parliament is a procedure where we invite member states as much as we can to cooperate when it's asked, to ask them for reasons why they are not cooperating, and if they are in the end still refusing to cooperate, we have to ask them to then please, on your own, do this investigation and report back about the consequences. Because the problem is if we have mobile disputes where two, three, or four member states are concerned, if one of them says, I don't want to participate, then we lose the value of that uh, investigation. So it is absolutely crucial that member states participate, uh, and we are looking forward to very much strengthen that part in the European Parliament report on this. As I said, we are working hard in the European Parliament. We're negotiating at the moment, and we're trying to get this done uh, quickly, because I think it's very important to come back to the European citizens with the European elections in mind next year and show them that we are making a difference here. And uh, your report that you will adopt here today will help us as uh, a, a very good and valuable inspiration for our work. And I just would like to thank you uh, very much for that.